Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for you guys. Today we are going to be going over uh, one of the decks that I'm going to be laddering with here at the beginning of Season 6. Uh, has just begun, or should just be beginning around the time that this video is coming out. And as usual, I want to showcase my decks and give some updated deck profiles before I show, sh start showing rather uh, games from my laddering up to Diamond 1 uh, here in Season 6. And one of the decks I'm going to be using is, to probably nobody's surprise, is uh, good old Sword Soul Tenyi here. As you can see, we've jumped up from 1.5 to the 2.0 build because I have dr made some drastic changes to the build. I've, I've kind of more or less rebuilt the deck. I don't think there's overall too many differences, but uh, we'll be going over the differences. You're probably already noticing the major one, which is, yes, I have finally decided to include Arc Nemesis Protoss in the deck. And, you know, I gotta say, just like with the Halgaroid online, um, sure, it might not be essential, but it is a, a very nice addition. And yeah, it doesn't always come up, but, you know, it's, it's nice when you do have it. And it is searchable, too. You can set it up. Uh, actually, one of the replays we're going to show is going to uh, showcase a pretty uh, nutty turn one where we set up Protoss in a little bit of a weird but cool way. We'll get, we'll get into that when we get into it. But uh, first, as always, with deck profiles, particularly with updates, I want to go uh, not only through the card, you know, or through the deck card by card. We do that every video. But I also want to break down, you know, the cards, their roles in the deck. Um, I'm kind of, you know, going to approach this video a little bit with, like, assuming maybe you haven't seen some of my uh, earlier Sword Soul um, videos, and in that case, we're going to show uh, or rather talk about just what the deck can do. That said, if you would like to view the combo guide, that should be linked in the description down below, um, down there. So, yeah, let's go ahead and just go through the uh, deck card by card. I'll, sh you know, showcase what each of the cards are, and then we'll go ahead and talk about them all and their roles in the deck. So, we are playing one Effect Veiler, one Deskbot 001. 3 Tinny Spirit Adhara, 3 Maxi, 3 Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, 3 Sword Soul of Moye, 2 Sword Soul of Taya, 2 Incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous, 3 Sword Soul Strategist Long Yuan, 2 Tinny Spirit Vishuda, 3 Tinny Spirit Ashina, 1 Nibiru the Primal Being, 2 Arc Nemesis Protos, 2 Vessel for the Dragon Cycle, 3 Sword Soul Emergence, 2 Call by the Grave, 3 Crossout Designator, 1 Infinite Permanence, and then finally 1 Sword Soul Blackout. Now down here in the extra deck we are playing 1 Yazzy, Evil of the Yang Zing, 2 Baxia, Brightness of the Yang Zing, 1 Draco Berserker of the Tenyi, 1 Adamancipator Risen Dragite, 2 Sword Soul Grandmaster Chi Shao, 1 Chao Fang, Phantom of the Yang Zing, 1 Baron de Fleur, 1 Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Cheng Ying, 2 Monk of the Tenyi, 1 Christian Halky Fibrax, 1 Shaman of the Tenyi, and then finally Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon. So, yeah, now as we can see, my build is a little bit more in line with some of the more standard, quote unquote, standard builds. Uh, you know, at the start of the season, I decided to do some testing in a build that did not use uh, Protoss and was not using the Halky Fibrax, Aurorodon, uh, and Deskwat line, that little engine there. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, there, and, and, you know, in see the videos past uh you know they're not essential to the deck's function you can certainly play the deck without them so if for example you're trying to build the deck but you're thinking of like or you're looking for ultra rares that aren't necessary you could get away without halky fibrax aurora don protos probably most easily and still be you know playing a core sword soul deck uh that said while they're again while they are not necessary they do add some great extension uh to the uh, kind of core plays the core combos we got which again if you want to see all those combos played out uh in full then again you can check out my combo guide in the description there but you know protos is pretty easy to tack on at the end of a play uh, if you control synchro monster it can be searched by emergence which again if you control sword soul synchro you can add any war monster instead of a sword soul monster um and the idea is that you just like tack it on at the end and um yeah, from there you 
Uh, you usually just call dark uh, if you're just, you know, going first and blindly calling an attribute uh, because Protoss won't be destroyed by its own effect and you can cut off the dark attribute, which is kind of like, it's it's kind of universally used, but not at the same time. It's a little bit weird, right? Like, of course, DPE is a pretty universally used card and Protoss definitely cuts that off. Um, but it's interestingly, like, Sword Soul and Trizu, their core combos don't really rely on darks. Well, I guess if you call dark against Trizu, they can't Shurig, which is actually really good. Um, or Axis Code, either, now that I think about it. Yeah, uh, Nightmare Unicorn and Axis Code are also really good generic cards that Protoss hits. So, uh, it's actually, you know what, now that I, you know, think about it more out loud, or to, like, say it out loud, it actually is pretty good against Trizu. Um, yeah, but I didn't realize how many of those uh, boss monsters were dark. <laughs> Go figure. But, uh, yeah, the Mirror Match can, you know, it doesn't really t uh, like cut off too much in the Mirror Match. Um, which was for a while why I was a bit like hesitant to add Protoss, but uh, you know, even if its effect isn't too useful, it's still got a really good body. A really good attribute to call in the mirror match though is water, and it's very much worth it to blow up one of your own water monsters to stop your opponent from summoning waters in the mirror match because uh, the Sword Soul token is a water, so yeah, you cut that off and then your Sword Soul opponent won't be able to really do much of anything because they won't have uh, any tuners. So the other uh, cards that I mentioned that were kind of optional but still really good are the Crystron, Halky, Fibrax, and Aurorodon Engine. Basically, the way that this works in the deck is that uh, if you open kind of a bricked hand, like let's say you open like... Um, I think we'll actually see an example of this in one of the games, but like, you know, you open like an Adhara and a Max C, but you don't really open anything else. Well, you can special the Adhara by its own effect, normal summon the Max C, and then go into a Halky Fibrax. From there, you special summon Deskbot 001, link those into Aurorodon, get your three tokens. Uh, and then the Deskbot comes back by its own effect. Um, then you can sync the level 1 Deskbot with two of the level 3 tokens, two of the three tokens, in order to make uh, Yazzie evil of the Yang Zing. From there, we'll use Aurora Dawn's second effect, the first of the bullet point effects here, attributing itself, not the token, itself, uh, to destroy the Yazzie. You want to leave the token on board to enable some of your 10e effects that require a non-effect monster to be on the field, like the Adhara. Uh, you know, from there, you can... Uh, you use Yazzie's effect. When it's destroyed, you can special summon a war monster uh, from your deck. Uh, depending on the situation, if you have something in hand you can reveal, uh, you can summon the Moye. Or if you don't, you can still special summon the Taya and banish one of your war monsters from Grave to then, uh, you know, go into Chi Shao. From there, you can add Emergence, go into any number of things. Most likely, uh, you know, the uh, Strategist and then eventually into Baron. So uh, that is what makes the Halky Firebrax and Aurora Online so good. Not just that, actually, not just opening dead, like, you know, quote unquote dead hands but like sometimes if you, like you're making you know like a moye play and your moye gets negated um you might still be able to like cheese out a halky fiber like let's say you special summon like let's say you open adhara moye and like another sword soul card like blackout whatever uh, you can special the adhara normal the moye reveal the blackout now effect failure and imperm are really impactful against this deck because that moye effect when you get the normal summon is so important uh, to resolve uh, so let's say, you know, the Veiler, you're Moye, and then you're really sad, because then you can't really combo. Well, except you have Adhara and Moye out, uh, then you can just go into Halky Fibrax, and like I said, from there, just go into the same line. Um, also, you this also enables you in certain hands to go off without even normal summoning. Like, let's say you open, uh, like, Vishuda and Adhara, and, I don't know, like a Moye with another target. Like, that's kind of a niche hand, but you could special like the Vishuda, send it for a monk, special the Adhara, and then go into a Halky Fibrax, and then, yeah, you get your combo line, and you haven't even used your normal summon for Moya yet, and you don't even necessarily have to have something to reveal, um, because through all your comboing, you'll, you know, inevitably be able to add something with, like, Chi Shao, or get, like, a draw in or something, or maybe use Adhara's effect eventually to wheel the worm to your hand, so... Um, yeah, the, the Halky Fibrax and Roar Online, also not essential, but also very, very nice. Um, so yeah, the Tennies are here pretty much uh, to extend the Sword Souls and further their plays. Uh, very, very good for that, not only with the Halky Fibrax line, but just in general. Like, Ashina's just a very, very good card to open, because you can special it, send it to the graveyard for a Monk. Monk uh, is really important to have on the board, even though this doesn't look very important, because... Uh, you know, for the, all the uh, graveyard or hand effects for the tinnies, you need to have a non-effect monster on the board. Now, this can be your sword soul token, but more often than not, it's going to be your monk. A monk also being a good way to just, you know, put your tinny cards in the graveyard. We're playing two because often enough it comes up where, like, 
Um, you know, let's say you have like an Adhara and an Ashina, and like you send the Ashina for a monk, and then um, you, you know, summon the Adhara, and like then you have Adhara and the monk on the board, and you want to activate Ashina's effect in graveyard after you send the Adhara to the graveyard. Well, if you just go Adhara and monk into Shaman, then you no longer have a non effect monster in the board, you can't use Ashina's effect from grave. So then you would need to go into a second monk to ensure that you still have a non effect monster, and you can still use Ashina's effect. So uh, that's why it's important to have two monk of the ten ye. Again, even though it's just like, well, this is just a random, like, vanilla, it's it's very, very important. This is like the key to activating your 10 e effects, is the monk here. The sword souls, in and of themselves, I mean, if you're familiar at all with the deck, it's pretty self-explanatory, you know, how they function. They all make their own tuners, uh, which can let you go into various level 8 synchros, most often Chi Shao. Uh, Baxia, the reason we're playing 2 in the extra deck is because it's not only a good uh, responsive card, often shuffling 2 cards back because we have a ton of different attributes uh, in the deck. Um, but it can also be used as a combo piece by destroying a card you control and then special summoning a level 4 lower monster at the graveyard. You can use this to blow up like uh, leftover your leftover token with Aurorodon. You can use it to blow up like a monk and then bring uh, either like a, a level 1 tuner back from the grave to then go into Chao Fang. Sometimes you can just bring back like a Moye that you sent earlier. We'll show a game where we do that. Where like we uh, use a Taya earlier to send a Moye and then we're later able to go into Baxia, blow up into leftover Aurorodon token, then bring back back the Moye, which I hadn't used yet, so then I could keep comboing by, you know, activating the Moye's effect. So, Baxia is a very, very versatile card and a very, very good one, which is why we're playing two copies. Um, the, yeah, the rest of the extra deck here is pretty standard. I feel like the main deck is actually relatively standard as well. I think slightly more people are playing three Ecclesia than two. I just use two because of ratioing. I am only playing 40 cards, which I think is actually fairly uncommon for this deck. And to be fair, Sword Soul Tinny is a deck where you can definitely get away with more than 40 cards. Like, realistically, you could probably get away with up to like 44 without any real hits to consistency. Um, I just like my 40 card decks and that's a that's a personal thing for me. And it's interesting because this is the first deck I've ever played where like, that might actually be standing in the way of playing an optimized version of the deck. And it is something I've considered running over 40 cards, even if it's just 41 or 42, um, because there are other cards I would like to include in this deck. But uh, these 40 are what I would consider like the bare bones, like kind of essential here. Um, so, like, you know, for ratioing purposes, we're playing like one Veiler, one Nibiru, one Imperm. I'd kind of like another Imperm, but it's not super necessary. Um, those, these are not only good, obviously, negation disruption tools, but also very good with our three crossout designator, which I do think three is extremely good in this deck. Uh, not just because this deck needs protection for its combos, but because Sword Soul Tangy is by far the most prominent deck uh, seen in tournaments and on ladder, just as far as like the number of decks being played, mostly on ladder, I think more than tournaments, tournaments actually right now. Um, but suffice it to say, a lot of people are playing this deck, so having three crossouts to be able to hit just a bunch of stuff in the mirror is super, super good. We are playing Vessel of the Dragon Cycle again as well. Uh, this card is particularly good in the Halky Fibrex and Auroradon variants. Um, because it enables you to set up uh, pretty good, like, just, just set up your 10 e cards. Um, in order to uh, make plays. If you're not playing Halky Fibrax and Aurodon, uh, that's where I suggest taking this card out, which again, I did for a while because I wasn't playing them, but now that they're in the deck, uh, so are the uh, Vessels now are back in the deck as well. Uh, also is good for Protoss. Like, there are times where you'll just, you'll send the Protoss with the Vessel, and then you can, like, banish it for, say, like, a Taya, and then later down the turn you can use Adhara to wheel it back to your hand again. We'll show a game where we actually end up doing a play like that, so... Um, yeah, Vessel is, is fairly versatile in what it allows you to do there. And then, of course, we're playing like 3 Max C and 3 Ash, because those are the best hand traps. Obviously, playing 2 Call By is pretty much a staple at this point. Um, yeah, I think that covers pretty much everything about the deck here. Uh, as always, if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to address those. Uh, as I love hearing back from you guys, and if you have any suggestions as well, you know, um, particularly what you think about 40 versus over 40 for this deck, uh, and if you were to add a couple of cards, what would you think, uh, you know, what do you think would be good inclusions? Like I said, I'm always interested in your guys' feedback. Okay, so from here, we are going to watch uh, some replays of the... Uh, deck here now this is gonna be from the end of season five so we're not quite you know featuring season six games just yet um, but nevertheless this will showcase um, what the deck is capable of so let's go ahead and take a look at some of those. 
Okay, so this first game is going to be against a Grass Shadal deck, a 60 card one, but this is only going to be like a one turn game. I am using this game to kind of showcase um, <laughs> kind of what the deck is capable of because we actually end up with a pretty ridiculous opening. Now, this hand looks fairly innocuous, right? It's pretty much just Adhara, Ashuna, and Vessel. Um, we also have a, you know, we have the extra vessel as a dead card because we can only use, you know, one per turn. And then we also have cross out here as uh, play insurance. But with just these three cards alone, we're going to be able to do so, so much. Let's take a look here. So I'm going to lead by using Ashina's effect. Opponent's going to chain Max C. I'm, of course, going to use my cross out designator to go ahead and take care of that Max C there. Um, always nice to lead with Ashina because, you know, you, I've got nothing on board, I can special summon it, I can send it to Link Summon a Monk, now I have my Monk set up, so my Tandy effects are all good, and I have the Ashina effect in Grave in order to get plays off, so that is precisely what we are going to be doing here. Uh, the Monk, being a non-effect monster, is also going to activate quote-unquote our Vessel. Uh, you can always use Vessel as a Foolish for Worm Monsters, and we're going to send the Protos here because I do plan on getting it back later. But I'll go ahead and add the Vishuda as well here. Now I'm going to special the Vishuda um, because, you know, I you know, it's a nor I can't normal summon it normally. And then I'm going to normally add Hara, and now I'm going to go into the Halky Fibrax line using the add Hara and the Monk. I don't really see myself needing the Monk at this point. We can get other non-effect monsters later, especially now that I have the Vishuda on board. And I don't want to lock myself into War Monsters by using Ashina too early, because then I can't do this line. Uh, always pays to remember that uh, if you use Ashina's effect to summon a Tendi from the deck, you can only summon War Monsters for the rest of the turn. So, definitely always need to remember that. But uh, it doesn't conflict with the Halk line really that much at all. You just do the Halk line and then you use Ashina. It's not, not really... Not really too much to it, but yep, here's the Halk line being played out. Like I mentioned earlier, we're sending the Aurora Don to send the Yazzie. Now, since I don't have a Sword Soul or a uh, Tenny, or not a Tenny, a Sword Soul or a Worm card, uh, yeah, I have to use Taya, but that's okay. We can go ahead and use Taya to summon our Chi Shao here. And we can still chain block the Chi Shao uh, Surge with the Taya uh, Foolish effect. So, we're going to use Taya to send Moya. I mentioned this in the deck profile as well. It's actually going to be the same game here. And we're going to search the Emergence with the Chi Shao. Uh, better than searching the uh, Sword Soul monster straight up, because sometimes you might want a just another Worm monster instead. And remember, while we have the Secret monster out, we can use the Emergence there. Now, I actually want to pause, because I want to talk about that play I just did. It's, again, another one I talked about earlier in the deck profile, where uh, you remember earlier with the Vessel, we actually sent the Protoss to the Graveyard. Then we banished it with the Taya, in order to make the Sword Soul token. Now, since we had the Adhara engrave and we had the non-effect monster, the token on board, we were able to banish the Adhara in order to wheel the Protoss back to our hand. So that's kind of one of those like cool little ways that you can end up searching the Protoss and getting it out uh, without even having to use the Emergence here. So that's pretty nice. And now we have used Ashina's effect at this point, so we can only summon Worms, but that's going to be A-OK. -okay. I'm going to summon Baxi and kind of use it as a combo piece. Again, I mentioned this earlier in the deck profile. This all happened in the same game, which is really cool. The same turn one combo with just those three cards there. Uh, yeah, we send the token to bring back the Moye. Now we can use Moye to make Draco Berserker, uh, which I, I don't make as often as I should. This card's actually really, really good. Um, yeah, now we can use Emergence for the Long Yuan. Uh, we can activate that, we can make a Chen Ying, and then we can set up the Protos here, but of course our opponent's actually going to concede uh, before we can do that. But yeah, that hand was so insane. Again, with Adhara, Ashina, and the Vessel, we are able, the end board would have been a Baxia, a Chen Ying, a Qi Xiao, an Arc Nemesis Protos, and a Draco Berserker the Ten Yi. So that's, pr <laughs> that's pretty ridiculous. Um, I think the Draco Berserker actually should have been destroyed by the Protoss, though, so I probably should have played the Protoss before getting the Draco Berserker out, if possible. Um, but, I mean, either way, it's still really, really good end board. So, all right, let's go ahead and look at the next game here. Okay, this next duel we're going to watch is actually going to be against the Mirror match, so definitely always nice to showcase games against the Mirror because... Uh, especially, I imagine, during our Season 6 grind, this is going to be quite a common matchup. And you see we opened, like, the... <laughs> this is, like, what I like to refer to as a do-whatever-you-want hand, because, you know, we opened the Moye, the Taya, the Emergence, and the Protoss. Um, would have been nice to open, of course, as always, a call by our cross out, but as long as our opponent doesn't have any uh, hand traps, so it doesn't look like they have, like, a Maxi or anything here, uh, we are 
pretty much good to go. As always, gonna chain block the Chi Shao with the Moye draw so that our search doesn't get ash. And we drew the vessel, so it's like uh, we get to search a blackout here. This like this very much continues to be a do whatever you want hand. Um, I've already got the Protoss and I've already got the vessel to set up my Tinny monsters, so we can just use Emergence to search the uh, Long Yuan here. Uh, while the token is out, it's going to be important to set up the vessel uh, while the token is there. Um, I decided to send the Adhar to the grave and add the Ashina to hand um, because, you know, I knew I was going to be banishing stuff for Protoss, and I thought, well, I can wheel something back to my hand with Adhar, something that I banished with Protoss. So, yep, we're going to call Dark with Protoss and then set two cards and pass. So, but like I said, this is going to be the mirror match where calling Dark actually doesn't really do much of anything. So, um, at least in terms of, like, stopping their combos. I guess it prevents them from summoning their Protoss, which is, which is not nothing, you know, it is still good, but... I'm like, oh, it does also prevent them from, from summoning Vishuda, which again is is minor, but not nothing. Um, of course, we're going to negate the Vishuda with Fleur because the Vishuda threatens to bounce the Fleur here. Um, okay, looks like they're going to emergence for the Long Yuan here. I've got the Blackout. Uh, then another nice thing about Protoss is that um, remember, Blackout doesn't send the War Monsters like a cost or anything. It's not like Icarus attack. It actually destroys it. So, well, it targets and then it destroys it. So. Um, we can actually target the Protoss, and then it won't get destroyed because Protoss can't be destroyed by card effects, and then we can just blow up two of our opponent's cards for free. Definitely targeting the Monk of the Tinny and the Sword Soul token here, because if we can leave our opponent, like if we can get the non-effect monsters off the board, one, that gets rid of the tuner that prevents them from synchroing, but two, so if they don't have a non-effect monster on the board, then they can't use this Ashina that's in the graveyard, so that's why I targeted those two. But as we can see here, our opponent's going to have a cross out designator, um, which, you know, this illustrates, you know, just how good this card is in the Mirror Mesh. This Blackout would have been devastating to my opponent's turn here, but alas, uh, the cross out is going to go ahead and negate it, and they're going to be able to keep comboing out here. So, a um, little bit unfortunate, but it's still nothing we can't handle at this point, you know. Um, all right, looks like they're Sinker Wing for 10 here, uh, and they get the Cheng Ying here. Um, which is actually pretty good in this scenario. Uh, this card tends to be better than Baron going second, whereas Baron tends to be the better level 10 for going first. Um, because, of course, uh, Cheng Ying can protect itself uh, unless you uh, negate its effects here. Now, um, one of the main reasons I negated the effects was just to kind of mitigate the damage I took, but it also serves the purpose of not, you know, banishing any of our cards this turn. I don't think my opponent has a way to banish at this point. It doesn't look like they do from their graveyard, but... Um, and of course, you know, there's kind of no reason not to. They were already targeting the Chi Shadow to get attacked anyway. Uh, so, you know, again, like I said, kind of kind of no reason not to there. But I do still have an Imperm, which is how I'm planning on taking care of this uh, Cheng Ying here. So like I, like I mentioned earlier, why it's important to have two monks is what my opponent just did there, right? They sent the, was it the Adhara, in order to get another monk, because again, if they had gone for a Shaman, they wouldn't have had a non-effect monster, and they could have they could not have wheeled uh, the Ashina back to their hand like they did just here. So a good illustration there of why it's important to have two monk of the Tengi. And yeah, they're just going to go ahead and pass. But again, uh, we do need to negate this Cheng Ying here. Uh, I'm, of course, going to use Baron's effect. Well, not of course, actually. Um, I, I made that sound a little bit more obvious than it actually was, because sometimes you might think, you know, well, isn't it better to have, like, the big uh, beat stick of Baron now as opposed to just sending it back to get an Adhara, of all things. Um, but it's actually going to be really important to have an on-effect monster um, because I've got this Ashina as all I really have for gas here. So, um, yeah, definitely worth it to send Baron back to get the Adhara as I'll now, yeah, leak away Adhara in order to get the Monk out. And then I can use Ashina and then I've got some plays. Now, it always pays to remember that Cheng Ying can activate when a card is banished, like, period, right? So, even though we were the one who did the banishing for, for the Adhara there, the Cheng Ying activates. Which, actually, it makes Cheng Ying really, really good against the Mirror Match, um, as well as good going second, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, so, it definitely pays to remember that, but, of course, we planned ahead for this. We've got the Emperm face down, so... I'm not going to be a big deal, and yeah, the opponent's just going to go ahead and concede at this point as they realize they can no longer disrupt me. I've got plenty of plays, and we can just combo out, so... Um, very nice demonstration of how to handle the mirror match. I mean, we went first, which is always nice, but, you know, we still had a little bit of disruptions in our plans, like our blackout getting negated and all that fun stuff, but still able to come out on top there. Okay, let's go ahead and watch the next one. Okay, let's take a look at this next game here against Pendulum Magicians, which is always a, <laughs> always an interesting deck to play against. I don't know, Pendulum decks are, are very unique. I like them. I like playing against them. 
Okay, so here we are going to be taking the second turn, but we did open Maxi and the Imperm, so that's pretty good for us. Uh, Maxi definitely probably going to be a bit more useful. Well, I don't know, the Imperm is actually pretty useful against Pendulums, but... Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate the Maxi in response to this uh, Chronograph effect. Just in case they do decide to Special Summon it. I didn't think they were going to, but... Um, you know, just... Always good to have them under Maxi anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm also going to prevent the Imperm from... Or prevent the Dark Worm from adding a Pendulum Scale with the Imperm. Um, because I, the way I figure it, right? Like, Pendulum relies on a lot of searching in order to set up their extra deck to get summons and also set up their scales. So I find with decks like Pendulum that tend to do a lot of searching, it's generally best to cut off their searching as early as possible. Um, because if they're forced to rely on cards they opened with or cards they have to draw off of effects, they tend to just be much, 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 much less consistent. Uh, it's just overall the more efficient way, I think, to to handle them. And as we can see here, uh, that does end up being the case as they, you know, search this trap card and then they have one of their card in hand and are forced to pass. So, um, you know, our hand is, like, okay. We, I mean, we've got a Vishuda and an Emergence. We've got plays here. Um, but obviously the second Emergence could be in the second Maxi could have been something a little bit better, but, you know, we're going to start by setting up the Monk here, and I'm actually going to lead by with the Vishuda to uh, bounce the face-down time pendulograph here. I know they're going to chain it and just pop my Monk, but of course I'm going to get this off the board so that we can get our actual plays online um, and get that going here. Now, they do get the surge with the Star Pendulum Graph, but I'm not super-duper concerned about it. Um, I'm just going to emerge this for the Moya because I'm reasonably confident, like, the odds are really, really low for them to have disruption here. I know two of the cards in their hand are the trap card and then the monster they just searched and then they only had one other card left in hand. So, this one mystery card, like, yeah, it could have been disruption, but again, they couldn't have impermed, so it really could have only been a Valor to disrupt me here, so not too concerned about it. Um, yep, and the Moye resolves like I suspected it would. We're going to go ahead and just go into the Chi Shao at this point. And start doing some fairly standard uh, Sword Soul plays. The draw off Moye is especially nice in scenarios like this where every extra card helps. And of course, it's another Maxi. What can you do? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get the Long Yuan here. And I'll just go ahead and send the other Emergence because obviously I've already activated an Emergence here. Uh, from here, I can just go ahead and Synchro into Baron. So, I mean, this is a pretty good example of why Sword Soul is so strong as a deck. It's pretty similar to Trizu in this regard. We don't really have one card combos in the same way that Trizu does, but it's still fairly low commitment combos, like just two cards, and they can be pretty generic cards, or relatively, like, you know, generic cards, and we still have a lot of disruption, and even with simple combos, we still end on Chi Shao and Baron, which are good stats and disruption. Uh, as well. So as soon as my opponent sets up a Pendulum Scale, I'm going to go ahead and activate Max C. That's generally what I like to do against Pendulum decks, even though I'm pretty reasonably confident they're just going to activate Wisdom Eyes Effect and not Pendulum Summon. Uh, you never know, they could just go for the Pendulum Summon, so uh, it just tends to be better to have the uh, Maxi fire it off there early. Now, once again, keeping in mind with my philosophy of like, you know, it's better to prevent as many searches with decks like Pendulums that rely a lot on searches as possible. So, even though they're under Maxi, and you might think, well, I'm actually gonna let this Wisdom Eye resolve so that way I can get a Pendulum so that way I can get some draws, like, no, let's just go ahead and use Baron and force them to work with only the cards that they have here. Um, if they set under scale and then Pendulum Summon, great, then I still get Maxi draws, but this makes it much less likely for them to have gas and continue their turn so uh, I'm fine with using Baron's Negate right here and as you can see that's going to be enough for us to win the duel at that point as our win the duel rather at that point as our opponent is definitely out of gas so all right let's go ahead and watch the next game okay so this game is going to be against like a danger dark world very interesting deck but uh, I think this game illustrates some pretty good uh, points about uh, the timing of when to activate hand traps so Let's take a look. As you can see, we opened Maxi and Ash here, um, and Adhara and Emergence. You know, we got a pretty decent opening hand here. Um, now, I could, here's the thing, I could have just activated Emergence to search like a Moye and then summon it and reveal the Adhara, but then I was like, uh, I don't actually need to do that in order to make plays here, and I've got this extra Maxi. Why don't I, because I was thinking that, I was like, well, I can lead by specialing Adhara. It's typically best to do that if you can. But then if I activate Emergence, I'd have to search a Taya and banish it. Well, that, that's the line I was actually thinking. 
was searching its high up, banishing it, but then I was like, nah, you know what, I've got this extra Max C, let me just special the Adhara and then normal the spare Max C, and I'll just go for the Halka Fibrax line. And then I can save my emergence for later in the combo when I can be more specific about what I want to search, because I could search like a Protoss with it, I could search like an Ashina to discard for a long Yuan and to keep plays going after that. Like, there's a number of things I could do with this emergence, so. Um, yeah, like I said, we're gonna be special the Adhara, normal the spare max C, and we're just gonna go into the Halki Fibrax line. Not to not not overcomplicate things too much. Plus, even if things get, you know, screwed up here, I still got a C and an Ash in my hand. That's that's generally good. I don't I don't wanna say good enough, but like uh, you know, if you're going into your opponent's turn, even if all you have is C and Ash, you're still not in an awful position. You can you can reasonably stop a good number of things with that, so. Yeah, we're getting the Moye here, and then just going into the Chi Shao. Again, the Moye draws extra nice in hands like this, where you can use as much extra fuel as possible, or as much extra disruption, like with Valor here. So, um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get the Long Yuan. And uh, yeah, if I had if I had drawn any like any Worm or Sword Soul card, then I could have used the Emergence to set up an Arc Nemesis Protos here. But um, Valor, like I said, is still good to have as disruption. So. Uh, we'll just go ahead and search the Ashina to set up more plays, discard that with the Long Yuan, get the Baron here, and then, yeah, we can go ahead and activate uh, Ashina. Now, interesting uh, you know, thing I wanted to note here, because this is a change in the extra deck I've kind of been considering lately, is taking out this Dragite and putting in a Herald of the Arclight. Um, and this is actually a game, I kind of wanted to stop and point this out, where a Herald of the Arclight would have been pretty good. Um, because I could have specialed in Adhara instead of a Vishuda, and then synced the Adhara in the token uh, for a Herald of Arclight, which would have been another Omni Negate and a Banisher, too, uh, which would be, you know, it is generally pretty good against most decks. So, um, definitely worth considering there. I, for the moment, I'm still going to be playing the Dragite, but it's definitely one of those changes that's kind of like on my radar that I might possibly make here. So. Um, but, you know, even though we have to end with a Vishuda instead, like, we still get to wheel the Ashina back to our hand, and then we still end with, you know, three hand traps on top of the disruption from Chi Shao and Baron. So, we're still looking, you know, totally fine here. Opponent's gonna set two, and then Tsukunoko. I kind I actually thought they were Phantom Knights, uh, because they, you know, revealed with the, uh, the Tsukunoko here, so. I mean, the max is obviously still good because we get the draw, and yeah, opponent's gonna activate Brow here. Now, I decide, here's the thing, this is kind of why I call this uh, good hand trap timing, because I decided not to negate the brow draw with the Ash. I, I did kind of think about it for a second, but I was like, I don't know, negating a simple draw one with Ash, especially in a deck where I felt like they were probably going to activate more draw or search effects, I was actually expecting Dark World Dealings. Um, once I saw Brow, I thought to myself, okay, this is either like some kind of dedicated draw, maybe an Exodia type deck, or it's a Dark World Danger deck. And I think in either of those cases, the Ash is going to have a better target to negate than just this one draw here. So I decided not to Ash. Uh, and then of course, at that, my, at that point, my opponent must have felt like a little bit more emboldened and decided to flip their uh, triple tactics talents here in order to try to draw two cards. But uh, now I'm going to go ahead and Ash and basically prevent a Pot of Greed from going off here. So it's always nice when you're able to do that. And that's kind of what I meant when I said, um, you know, there is a good showcase, or a, I guess a decent showcase of uh, not using your negates here. Um, yeah, I don't, opponent runs their Zephyr into my Baron. I thought maybe they were going to try to start using the Zephyr's effect, and I was kind of debating whether or not I was going to use my Baron negate if they tried to bring back Zephyr here. Uh, ultimately, in thinking about things they could make with it, I decided that Baron was probably still better used later anyway, so if they had tried to bounce, you know, the Tsukunoko back to bring the Zephyrus back, um, then, yeah, I think I would just let that resolve with the Baron, I don't, I think that would have been fine, but, uh, nope, they decide not to, they just let it pass back to me, so, not really sure what the point of summoning Zephyrus and then running into my monster was, but okay, I'll blow up their back with Baron, it's just a bluff Avarice, so, uh, we can go ahead and just use Ashina, um, with, you know, summon Adhara, with the Vishuda, we can make a Baxia, shuffle back this, uh, Sukunoko here, and then at this point we've got more than enough damage, um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, sure, I'll bring back Moye, and then I was like, oh, I don't have enough targets, or I don't have any targets, so I brought it back in defense, whatever, we'll just, <laughs> it doesn't matter, we'll just attack for game. And yeah, that's gonna do it for that game, um...
I'm trying to remember. I think that's about all the replays we've got here. There might be one more. Let me look again, but I think we're just going to end up moving to the outro here. Okay, yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and move on to the outro here. I did have another replay, but it was with the, the previous iteration of the deck without, uh, without like, Protoss in it. So I decided, well, you know, let's just keep it to this version and not make things confusing. So, um, yeah, that is the... Uh, those are the games there, and this has been the profile for my latest and, uh, I think honestly greatest version of Sword Soul Tenyi as we move into Season 6 here. I mean, it's the end of Season 5 at the time I'm recording this, but, uh, you know, the new season for me right now is only a few days away, and I'm going to keep testing this build. Um, we're going to be playing it on a stream uh, tomorrow night, again, the night I'm recording this, not the night you're watching this. Although, if you would like notifications of when I'm going to be streaming, uh, you're going to want to check out the description where you can find links to uh, both my Twitch and my Twitter. You can follow me on both or either platform to get announcements of when I go live. Uh, on Twitter, I like to tweet out about an hour before I go live, so that way you get a little bit of advanced notification. Um, but... Yeah, so feel free to check those out. Also in the description, like I mentioned earlier, you can find a combo guide if you like some more uh, in-depth in uh, instruction on how this deck uh, combos out, uh, particularly on turn one. And yeah, if you feel like checking those out, that'd be great. Um, but honestly, I just appreciate you watching the video, especially all the way to the end like this. Um, and I'm especially appreciative as well to those who are um, commenting and subscribing because I love, love, love seeing your guys' comments. You always offer good feedback um, and suggestions, and I love interacting with you guys in the comments. I like to, I like to take you know a little bit of time, at least 15 minutes uh, each day, to just sit down and reply to quite a few of the comments in the uh, uh, on, on all my videos there. So, um, and then of course by subscribing, that is going to be the best way to get notified of when my videos go up there. But um, you know, just watching is more than enough for me. Just having you guys along for the ride. Um, but, but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, without further ado, this is Xlex signing off. Hope you guys have a fantastic day.